Hey friends, Mike Shaner here. This is the No Treason broadcast, live streamed on Writing the Revolution at Facebook and then downloaded to YouTube. So, I'm going to jump right into it today. I'm going to go through the uh, the Michael Heiss interview with Reason Magazine. I've got some of the transcripts here and I'm going to, uh, yeah. So, um, you know, Victor Hugo said, no force on earth can stop an idea whose time has come. I'm a voluntarist. I don't identify as a libertarian. I identify as a voluntarist. But, um, and I used to view the Libertarian Party with sort of a sad, bitter disgust. I watched them discard the perfect message of Ron Paul to beg for crumbs from the political establishment. I watched as the jealous and incompetent like Nick Sarwak attempted, and in spite of themselves, nearly succeeded at smothering the flame of revolution ignited by the good doctor. I watched them try to be the force of destruction for an idea whose time had come. I stayed away. I did my own thing. I minded my own business. I left that party to die. I believed it needed to do so. But then I saw a miraculous cliché. I observed a phoenix rising from the ashes of a near-dead movement. Next, I watched as the Mises Caucus and its members were cursed and slandered for trying to change that culture. So I joined them. That's right. I am a member of the Libertarian Party Mises Caucus, and I'm a state organizer for the Alabama Mises Caucus. I've seen great change happen at a rapid pace. I'm proud of it. But recently I was reminded of how far we have to go. We hadn't even made it to the mountain yet, let alone the top. The but the establishment's puffing its progressive chest and wheezing their ever-woke best to mount one last fight against the inevitable. So I believe we haven't made it to the mountain yet, but at least we can see it from here. While watching Mrs. Caucus founder Michael Heiss's interview with Reason Magazine, I was struck by two particular exchanges. In both cases, Zach Weissmuller acts more like he's given a lecture than an interview. So I'm going to paraphrase those for brevity, but I'll put the, the uh, link to the full interview, probably this whole transcript, uh, in, the, uh, in the details. And I'll put it on the uh, seditionpapers.substack um, page so you can watch the whole thing and, and click and go to it. The first thing that seemed to really bother reason, the Reason interviewer was uh, a meme tweet put out by the Libertarian Party in New Hampshire mocking Meghan McCain as she grieved over the decorated casket of her warmongering father, John. Zach said, I mean, there's, you know, putting out tweets of Meghan McCain crying at her dad's funeral. That's just another example of this weird kind of lack of empathy that I don't understand. Michael didn't miss a beat. He delivered the perfect response. Empathy for who? Megan McCain? I don't have any empathy for Megan McCain. Why would I? End the quote. Correct, though. That's the right response. How could anyone who hasn't lived a pampered life delivered by the name of a brutal warlord identify with her? The one thing I would have added here is, would you have empathy for the family of Osama bin Laden or Adolf Hitler? I think it's important for people to recognize these animals for who they are. I would have forced them to tell me how either of these people are less deserving of empathy or respect than old bomb, 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 I ran, and John McCain. Nick Gillespie then jumped in with an attempt to explain, it isn't about truth. It's about strategic communication. Before he became exasperated that Michael couldn't concede libertarianism is really about empathy, Michael argued instead and correctly that libertarianism is about property rights and liberty. Nick, seemingly deciding since he couldn't get Heist to condemn the tweets on moral grounds, perhaps he could convince him it was a strategic failure. Heist didn't bite and instead called it an appropriate, expre called it an exp appropriate expression of outrage that started a conversation about warmongers. <clears throat> and Nick snidely replied that the tweet didn't stop any warmongers from mongering as if Treating warmongers like decent people deserving empathy and respect has lessened their warmongering? Okay. I thought Michael handled himself brilliantly, but I do wish he would have used this as an avenue to point out that nothing will stop a warmonger from mongering. But maybe it will get people to ask why libertarians are not fond, fond of Meghan McCain, which could open the door for more people to view her maniacal father through the same lens they would Bin Laden or Hitler or any other murderous terrorist. This is the only achievable short-term goal. Change the cup culture and stop viewing evil people as heroes just because they wear a red, white, and blue cape. 
The second exchange, and really it was a continuation of the McCain lecture, began with Zach reasserting that libertarian philosophy is in fact about empathy. Once he settled that for us, he decided it was important to let us know that the LP should really be focused on agreeing with the accepted positions of the establishment political class. Whew. Zach, I'm paraphrasing. There's a sentiment that the Libertarian Party is becoming a bunch of curmudgeons against anything that is currently popular by the accepted po political class, such as support for the Ukraine and COVID vaccines. After all, Libertarian... <clears throat> Libertarian ideas are meant to analyze things in a very reason-based way, as opposed to being reactive. Now, I'm not certain that Michael completely heard and understood the, the full question here, because his response was, I think that's right. You can't be reactionary because you, you get led around by the nose. But that is only one state affiliate in their experiment, and we'll see what happens at their convention. And I think he was... He was trying to answer the question of, of being a reactionary there and didn't really hear the full thing because if you watch the uh, the video, you'll see there's a little, um, sometimes I don't think they quite hurt each other. But the only logical or reasonable response would have been no. As I said earlier, libertarianism is about property rights and liberty. Those things are rational on their own. Sucking up to the political class for the past how many ever decades has done absolutely nothing to advance liberty or even shift the culture in that direction. We're further away from libertarianism than we were when, when the party was founded, when Ron Paul ran in 88. We're, we're much, look at what just happened with COVID and how uh, excited, every, I mean, everybody just, how angry everybody got at you not following the dictates, you know? Um, we've got to change the culture. And anyway, so Zach, though, he couldn't leave well enough alone. He doubled down on how the libertarian party is meant to kiss the establishment grits. I'm not talking about that, he said. I'm talking about the Ukraine conversation. It kind of feels like a lot of people were feeling supportive of Ukraine, and the Libertarian Party's stance was, well, we have to be as anti-Ukraine as possible. Some of that has leaked into vaccine discourse and so forth. It's concerning to people who are trying to reason through some of them on a case-by-case -case basis. So this is why Michael Heiss is the leader of a powerful political movement, and I'm not. Michael calmly diverted the conversation to populist anger and explained empathy is not driving the vehicle of politics right now and that our job is to abolish the state, which is responsible for infl inflation, mass incarceration, and war. I wouldn't have been able to shift so effortlessly. I get hung up on the points and would have had to make it clear that absolutely no libertarian case can be made to support government intervention in foreign affairs, including Ukraine, or for the godforsaken COVID regime. My response would be, hey, if you want to fight for or against Ukraine, go ahead. If you want to take an experimental drug and hope it lessens the effects because it doesn't prevent contra uh, contraction of a glorified cold, go ahead. It isn't the Libertarian Party's job to make you feel good about it, though. And it isn't the job of the liber Liberty Movement to recruit or attract people who'd be attracted to the nonsense, that, that nonsensical message that just fell from your lips. Michael Heiss didn't do that. He stayed on point. And he should be given credit for that, I think. I thought Reason did their usual milk toast Reason best, and I think Michael Heiss presented a clear and promising message for the future. The decentralized revolution is a common sense approach to changing the culture and nullifying the Leviathan by focusing on what matters in your own backyard. It isn't so much a strategy, though. Um, there is a beautiful strategy for execution, so much as it is a guide to Libertarianism 101. It is the Mises Caucus focusing on its promise to steer the party back to libertarianism. No one should be confused into believing the path forward will be easy. There's still the swampy hole created by two decades of progressives and neocons bludgeoning the name of libertarianism that must be navigated. And then there's the ascent up the mountain, which only gets harder as you climb higher. There's a long winding road, and it begins with changing the culture at home. Maybe it starts with neighbors at least questioning why they shouldn't revere a Senate, uh, Senate gangster more than an Islamic or a Mexican one. Maybe it starts with lowering your local sales tax or changing the curriculum at community schools. Maybe we even begin to question why someone needs to get, to get a government license to cut your hair or sell your house. The message is easy to sell because the message is perfect. It's time to realize the idea of liberty and no force on earth can stop an idea his time has come. My name is Mike Shaner. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Mike Shaner. You can follow me on Twitter at CSA Wordsmith. Uh, TikTok is Mike Shaner. 
Please subscribe to the seditionpapers.substack.com. Um, please follow the Writing the Revolution page on Facebook. And please follow this YouTube page, um, the Sedition Papers YouTube page. Thanks again, friends. And uh, we're going to have a lot of changes the next time you see me. The whole platform will be very, very different. So uh, I'm excited. I'm not going to tell you too much about it. Just, just tune in and see. But please, uh, please subscribe, follow, share the word. Um, like I said, it's a long, winding road. But it's time to realize the idea. And nothing can stop that idea.